Hey everyone, today I wanted to go over a common logic circuit which I'm seeing around through the worlds of Neos, which uh, provides you with a simple way to toggle a gesture that's based on sort of any controller and doesn't rely on the touchpad. This is limiting as you can only really get sort of two to three um, gestures out of it, uh, but it's a start. It also teaches you some uh, interesting parts of logic. I, I've seen everyone pass around this blueprint. I want to take the time and explain um, how each part of it works. We're going to build it manually. Uh, so we're going to start with the Lex GV4 here, as per normal. I'm just going to reset my zoom because I noticed in the previous video that it was problematic. Uh, reset distance, field of view. Oh, it looks like it's okay this time. We'll carry on. Uh, so we've got the Lexi here. It's got a bunch of shape keys on it. We're going to try and power blep again. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is go find blep. So I'm going to inspect the head. Go to the root. Go to the centered root. Find the body. Uh, this body, not the other body. That's just a bad naming on my part, which I'll fix in the world. Um, so I'm going to go all the way down to... Blap, where it is. I lose it every time I do something with Blap. Uh, there it is, Blap. So we're going to toggle Blap on and off. So I'm going to leave that to the left whilst we set up the logic. So um, to get started, we're going to need a couple of nodes. The first thing we're going to need is we're going to need a standard controller. Now, a standard controller is within the folder in the logic node called input devices, and then controllers, standard controller. When standard controller is spawned in the world, you'll see it's a very big node. Don't worry about it. We're going to talk about each and every part of it. So the first part of the input. So on the left here, we've got two inputs. The user, which is the user's controller. So if I put local user in there, it would be my controller. Or if I put host, it would be the host controller or uh, sorry, host's controller, or etc. But we also need to specify if it's left or right controller. You see this node here, it says controller node on it. If I pull this out to the left with trigger and then secondary select, you'll see a selection appears. We're going to leave this as left, but you can also cycle it to right. Do not use unknown, it doesn't work. It uh, It's uh, it's just a hold of a value for, for other purposes. Um, so choose left or right, we're going to leave on left. For now, just for testing, we're going to plug in the local user, sorry, actually the host user, into the user field here. So host user goes in. And then we're going to uh, go through each option. We're going to pull all of these out, because you can do that. So grab trigger in the world. Uh, trigger, secondary select, trigger, secondary select, trigger, secondary select, trigger, secondary select, etc. Now I have this band on my left hand because I use my right hand mostly for pointing. So the first value you can see is Frix Engine Knuckles Controller. This identifies the type of controller. Um, you can use this to kind of like figure out what device people are on and do some conditional logic based on that. The second one here is the primary. So you'll notice here, and you can see it on my... Uh, on my fingers, when I close my finger and pull the trigger, that goes from false to true. Additionally, and sorry to go out of order here, but uh, you'll see that this value here detects how hard I'm pulling the trigger. So a value of one means it's all the way down, and then a value of true here means the micro switch in the index controller here has engaged. If I go like halfway down, it's 0 0.5, full way down is one, and a release is zero. So I'm going to put that back down there. That's primary. Secondary is the um, secondary option on the index controller. This is the touchpad in the middle. So if I push the touchpad, you'll see that goes to true. Again, sorry to jump out of order, but if we pull this up, this here called axis float two is the um, X and Y coordinates of my finger on the touchpad. This is used in the gesture wheel um, and a bunch of other tools like uh, the hand menu here uses that coordinate system to figure out which way to scroll. We'll leave that down there. We won't be using that one today. Next, we have the grab. Grab is if you're grabbing. So if I grab with the index controller that's actually grabbing the side of the controller, you'll see that goes to true. The last one here is menu. So menu is when you open up the hand menu here. See how that briefly goes to, to false and true? That's when I tap it. If I hold menu, though, it will stay on. That's all there is to it. I'm going to clear these display nodes up so that we can focus a little bit more. I'll leave that one up there just so that you know that I'm working with Knuckles controllers in case you're following along at a different speed. So the next thing here we're going to need is we're going to need to decide what we want our gesture to be. It's usually good to make them a combination of, of um, options. So here you might do primary, um, 
and secondary must be pushed, and that's the one we're going to set up. Now, in logics and also other programming languages, um, the word bool here, grab bool and secondary bool, means a boolean, which is just a true false value. It's just a name for a true or false value. When you want to combine two booleans together, you do an operation called an and. It may seem um, unintuitive to start with, but what I tend to suggest to people to do is to think about it when in terms of a sentence. So what we're doing here is saying when primary, uh, sorry, when primary and secondary, I got the wrong node here, one second. So when primary and secondary are both pushed down, show true. So when primary and secondary show true. So now when I do primary and secondary, you'll see that this is true. I've got my finger down and my thumb is resting on the touchpad and pushing it down. And we get a true value out of that. If I let go of the touchpad, we'll see a false. And if I let go of the trigger, we'll also see false. If I now push both again and let go of the trigger, you'll see false because it needs to be both and can also be written as both. Now we have that set up, we need to um, make a toggle. We're going to do a toggle version here. You can do a non-toggle version, but the toggle makes it easier for you to let go and not worry about what your hands are doing. To do a toggle, we're going to use a node in flow called boolean latch. You may have seen a boolean latch before in another video. I'll go over it just again to help though. So a boolean latch has a lot of inputs and a lot of outputs. Let's go through them. So the first thing it has is a state. The state is uh, a boolean again, so it's exactly the same as one of these gray ones. But the rest of the nodes, um, the inputs, sorry, on this node are white, which means they're impulses. The top one is called set, the next one is called reset, and the bottom one is called toggle. I'm going to pull these out as pulse nodes so that you can see what's going on. So if I set the latch, you'll see true occurs here. If I reset the latch, false occurs. And then if I toggle the latch, it will rapidly toggle between um, true and false, depending on what the last value that was set was. You can think of this node as a light switch where you can turn it on or off, or one of the switches on the back of your computer. You know, that like uh, one zero switch. The problem here, though, is that we need to convert a bool into, a, in, uh, into an impulse, which is the white type. We're going to use fire on true for this, which is another node. So node selector, flow, fire on true. Now fire on true takes two inputs. The second one is optional, and we're going to leave it blank for now. We're just going to put the fire on true into, into here and then pull this out. So now what we're doing, if we do again English, it is when primary and secondary are pushed down, emit an impulse. So I'll do that now, primary and secondary, and we get an impulse. And you'll see here, total one, from probable prime. So I'll delete that now. We're going to wire that into toggle. Here's why. So now, every time I do this, the latch toggles on and off. Now we're going to need another node, which is a different type of conditional. Um, it operates on Booleans as well, but it's a slightly different type. So we go operators and we do question mark colon. This is also known as a ternary operation or a, like just a straightforward conditional. You might hear it be called like an if statement. I'll, I'll go through it as we spawn it in. So what this says is, if this condition is true, output this value. Otherwise, output this value. We're going to wire this in so that our statement is uh, based on the state of the latch. And then we're going to put two numbers into the um, into the top here and the bottom here. So in the top here, which is on true, we're going to put one. And in the bottom here, we're going to put zero. So we're going to go back to our node menu. We'll go to inputs and we'll find float. And then we'll spawn two in the world. So one, two. Zero is the right value for false, so we'll drop that in. And then uh, one is the right value here. For these nodes, you can also do um, a pull out operation like we did over there, where you grab it and then you spawn it in the world. I spawned them in just so that you can get used to where the floats are and how to spawn them manually. I'm gonna pull this out here. And now you'll see when I do both gestures, one, 
will appear and then zero will appear. That used a bunch of nodes, but there's actually a shortcut. I'm going to swap that out for the shortcut, but I wanted to show you how this works so that you can build it yourself. If you have a shape key that needs to be on 0.5 or 0.7 rather than 1, please use this node. But if you have a shape key that needs to go between 1 and 0, there is a shortcut. So I'm going to grab that shortcut now. So we'll get rid of these three nodes. And we can go to, oops, we can go to operators here. And then we can go to 0, 1 and drop that in. Zero one takes a boolean and outputs a float. And it does exactly the same thing. We're almost there. Uh, thank you for just sticking with it. So here we're now going to do a um, smooth up operation. So this can be found in math. And this is called smooth lerp. I'm going to spawn it in and then we'll talk about what it does. So the smooth lerp operation um, takes a value that's changing and smooths out the, tran the transition. I'm going to grab a pen for a second. So what you don't want is when that this Boolean changes, the value goes from zero immediately to one, because that will make a, a, a disjointed... Um, a disjointed animation. What you want is like a smooth like curve that happens over time. So out the black pen in the, in the black world. I should have thought of that one. But the point is you want a smooth curve. You don't want it to just go straight up. And that's what smooth lap does. So here we're going to plug the smooth lap output. Sorry, not the smooth lap output. The zero one output into the target value of the smooth lap. On speed, it's the speed of the lerping. I'm going to set eight here. Eight or four is usually a generalized good value. And then I'll pull a display node here, and then you'll see that when I do the gesture, it will count down and count up. Ignore the fact that it doesn't go to exactly one, and then when I go to zero, it goes kind of below zero and does this weird sort of thing here. Um, this is just a quirk of using um, floats within a system. Floats are what are called floating point numbers, and it's very difficult to represent um, zeros and ones exactly in them because float numbers are very precise. Don't worry about it. It still means zero and one. It's just that the smooth up is preventing that from showing it like to the utmost precision. Now we're done with the basic core logics. We just need to hook this up to a shape key. So over here we have our blep shape key and it's currently activated. So I'm going to deactivate it. And then I'm going to set the mode on the logic store tip to extract drive node. So it starts an interface. We're going to go to extract drive node. We're going to grab blep, come over to the left here and spawn it in the world. It will spawn two objects. These are separate. The arrow here is what you need, and the zero here is like for testing. Um, don't delete the arrow, uh, the zero box here until you've hooked up something. So here, I'm going to grab the output of smooth up and drop it on the arrow. Now you can get rid of the zero. And now, when I do the combination, we'll go between that being activated and deactivated. This works great, and we could stop here, but one of the things we might want to do is make it so that anyone that obtains and accesses this avatar gets that gesture. To do that, we need to do a couple more things, so bear with us. We need to change this to not be host user. It needs to turn into the user wearing an avatar. We can get this with a couple more nodes. So if we go back to the node menu, we go to slot, and then we do get active user. We delete this one. Plug the output of get active user into the user here. And then what this node does is it takes a slot. Now everything in Neos is a slot. I'm a slot. Um, this tool is a slot. My finger is a slot. It's um, basically a base unit of existence. You can think of it of like a, an atom for uh, Neos. So here, get active user takes a slot and will get the user which is um, actively using that slot. Using means like wearing or holding or touching. So get active user is like who's interacting with that slot. In the case of an avatar, it's who's wearing the avatar. Now we need to make 
that slot have a value in it. To do that, we're going to go to the root of the avatar, in this case, Lexigv4. We're going to swap our Logix tooltip back to Extract Interface. We're going to grab the Lexigv4 um, word and then click in the world, and we'll get one of these cards. These are called an interface card. And then we put the green part of Get Active User onto the top box here of slot, and you'll see an arrow forms. These arrows are a little buggy right now, so they don't follow around the interface card. Um, the team are going to work on fixing that up at some point. But right now, just know that like if you've done it once and there is an arrow here, however small it is, it is done. So now you'll see when I do the combination on my avatar, nothing happens. If, however, I equip the avatar and then I spawn a mirror, When I do the gesture, which is again, primary and secondary at the same time, the tongue sticks out. Everyone that uses this avatar will now have that. The last thing to do is to pack up this logic so that it's saved with the avatar when it's saved. To do that, go to the root of the avatar, Create a new child with the star icon. Name it whatever you'd like. In this case, I'm going to call it Black Logic. Grab Black Logics with your controller. Open up the hand menu. Go to Set Packing Root. See Black Logics here in pink. Turn to Facial Logics, and then Secondary, hold Secondary Select on any of the white parts of a node. A circle will go around the entire controller. When that circle is complete, let go. The logics will disappear. These are buggy and won't disappear. When the rest of your logics has disappeared, you are safe to delete these. It might feel odd, but you'll get used to that. It is an issue. The team are going to work on it soon. So just to get rid of this by grabbing it and deleting it. So now bleb logic is saved in here. If we turn back around to the mirror, everything still works. I hope that helps. That's a long video, but uh, I wanted to go through it like step by step as I see this being spawned out a lot in worlds and uh, this shows you how to use it. Thanks. Bye-bye.